Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Rune Stone. Today we're going to do Let's Talk Legendary. And today we're going to be talking about Crovax. So Crovax has actually been known for many names. Started as Crovax, then Crovax the Cursed, and then the Ascendant, Invincer of Wrath. Crovax was actually once human from Urborg and was part of the Bloodline Project. There were many attempts by Frixian to make Crovax betray his crewmates on the Weatherlight. Eventually, they were successful, and he became one of the deadliest enemies of the Weatherlight crew. So let's start by talking about Crovax's earlier life to see where the story begins. Crovax I was actually born a noble on the island of Urborg, where he had a poor relationship with his parents. Because of this, he was very isolated from the rest of the world and only had one friend. This friend was actually the angel Selenia, who was there to protect the family because she was bound to an artifact. As he grew up, he started to have feelings for Selena, who of course did not return these affections because she was an angel. After some time, he had a chance to join the Weatherlight crew. Of course, he decided to join them so he could explore all of Dominaria. When he joined the Weatherlight crew, he also took the artifact that controlled Selena because he actually fell in love with her. So Crovax finally decided to join the Weatherlight crew and that he was a warrior and was always reclusive, which made the other crew members think not to trust him. On his time on Weatherlight, he befriended Gerard, Capuchin, and Raphaelos to help collect the legacy artifacts. While on board, he heard that the beasts were ravaging Urborg and asked for the crew of Weatherlight for help in fear for his family. But the Frixian agents, Gallo Braid and Morophin, had only destroyed Crovax's land. So when Crovax and the crew of Weatherlight showed up, it was too late. His family had been killed. With them starting to actually lose the battle, Raphaelos being the first casualty, Crovax summoned Selena, who helped defeat the Phyrexians. Crovax had blamed everything on himself what happened and chose to stay in Urbar to help restore his family's heritage. But so after staying in his home, he became obsessed with Selena. Since she could not return any of his feelings, he decided to shatter the artifact that held her, thinking this is what had needed to be done to have her love him back. Of course, once he destroyed the artifact, Selena simply flew away. So Crovax was now truly alone in his family estate, ever slowly becoming insane. What he didn't know was that the destroying the artifact actually had cursed him, and the curse was actually to give him a life of misery and destined to destroy all things that he loved. So after some time after Selena's release, Gerard had actually visited him and asked him to rejoin the Weatherlight crew to help rescue Sisse, who was captured. He accepted and joined, but isolated himself during the trip as the curse took effect. When they arrived at the Wrath, where Sisse was located, it was Selena leading an attack with the Predator ship against the Weatherlight. It was actually the Predator ship is a Wrathy Phyrexian skyship designed similar to the Weatherlight ship. So Crovax, who saw this, went below deck and started to lose his mind, and Orm, the ship's healer, attempted to bring him to his senses. But Crovax felt so betrayed, he started to become obsessed with the idea of revenge. So Crovax finally came out of his fit from the battle and planned to get into the stronghold so they could free Sisse and other crew members that were taken. During the battle, legacy artifacts were also stolen and needed to be returned. Upon the arrival of the stronghold, there was a shapeshifter in the form of Selenia, and Crovax actually lost it, pursued it, and tore it to shreds. Naturally, this shocked the entire crew that were with him. Dryad asked him to go back to the ship after that incident, but Crovax convinced him that he would not jeopardize the mission. So, Gerard, Stark, and Vec, Marie, Crovax, went further into the stronghold. They later encountered the real Selena, who tried to kill Crovax and hurt Miri. As expected, Crovax lost his mind again and finally struck Selena. As he did this, she shattered into hundreds of shards and a lot of them dug into his flesh. As a result of it, it shattered his mind, it turned him into a vampire. After this attack, he lost consciousness and was brought back to the ship Weatherlight. At this point, the Predator was attacking and the ship again woke Crovax. Crovax walked to the deck to attempt to destroy the Weatherlight sails as the voices in his head commanded him to do so. Miri, suspecting something was wrong, stopped that, but in the process both fell out of the ship and into Volrath's garden. As Weatherlight was leaving, the planar portal, which is a way to travel between planes, sent a shockwave. This shockwave pushed Crovax to fall down into a ravine. He had hoped to die, but of course fate wouldn't let him. Crovax was found and then taken to Phyrexia. Then it was discovered the voice in his head was actually Yagamoth. Kuril, who was a noble, taught Crovax how to consume the life force of others. Also, Crovax was given glistening oil, blood, which gave him enhanced strength and endurance. Glistening oil is a substance that was engineered by the Phyrexians, if you just want to know. During this process, they removed his conscience as well. 
Once the process was done, he wanted to become the next evincer of wrath, but had to prove himself. This is where he had competition. He was competing for this position with two other people. First, one was Greven L. Vac, who was the commander of the Armies of Wrath and the Skyship Predator. The second person was the wizard Erte, who was a former member of the Weatherlight crew. Krovax could not beat Greven at first, but learned how to incapacitate him by manipulating his mimetical spine. While doing this, he wanted to scare Belby, the Phyrexian emissary. Belby was a cyborg, and its purpose was to choose the new Invincer. Because she couldn't choose him yet, he led an attack in the Sky Shroud Forest against rebels. Of course, this attack failed and the Krovax lost respect due to the poor planning, morale low, and the forest march to this place. While Erte demonstrated great tactical skill and captured 6,000 people preventing a rebellion. As a result, Krovax impaled all those hostages. But Belby still wouldn't make Krovax invincer as how he treated the hostages was shocking, but it did show promise of power. So since Cro she refused Krovax, Krovax actually threatened Belby if she won't, he will make an attempt to kill Erte. She agreed to his demands and the ceremony was to be held the next day. Of course, at this point, the former invincer, Volrath, returned and wanted his throne back. So Belby decided what one would do. They must duel for the throne and the title will be theirs. So the battle end seemed to be going evenly matched, but at one moment, Vorath was about to strike Krovax, but then it was diverted by the Erte. This gave the opportunity for Krovax to win. The only reason why Erte helped Krovax was that if he won, eventually he wanted to be in his favor. So after the battle, he started to control Wrath very quickly. He also began to arrange a funeral for Belby, who was killed by Eldarami. Eldarami was actually the leader of the Sky Shroud Elves. He had also planned for the execution of Volrath to prepare for as well. During this time, Krovax also made Erte a court mage, but had to turn him into a completed Phyrexian. So Krovax also had to begin with the Wrathy Overlay, which was actually the second stage of the Phyrexian invasion. The Wrathy Overlay is the merging of Domeria and Wrath. So he had to prepare all his troops for the invasion of Domeria. When the overlay finally happened, the stronghold actually ended up being inside a dormant herb over volcano. Once there, he turned his estate into a shrine for himself. He even exhumed his parents for his amusement. Krovax also killed Tazbo Tabak for her failure to at Koilus, who was actually the second in his command. She had to be executed because she betrayed him by trying to destroy the legacy weapon from being completed for revenge, basically. But now that everything was going according to plan, he even got Erte to teleport Gerard to the stronghold. The reason for this was he wanted to fight Gerard and wanted him to join the Phyrexia. If he did not join, he actually offered the idea of resurrecting Hannah, who would have passed away. To prove it, he could be done, he showed up with the resurrected Selena. This convinced Gerard to join Krovax. Yagamoth was actually pleased by Krovax and resurrected Squee so he can kill him over and over and over again. With Gerard now with Phyrexia, Krovax was able to do as he pleased. This didn't last long as the Multani showed up and transplanted some of Yagama into Urborg. So Krovax led a counterattack against those woodland creatures. While in the midst of battle, Erte sent a magical distress call to Krovax. So naturally, Krovax was infuriated that he had to travel all the way back to his throne by leaving the battle. But when he came back, he found out Gerard had actually returned from Phyrexia and with his freedom as well. Because of the gifts from Yagamoth, he was actually physically just as strong as Krovax. So of course, naturally, they were going to fight to the death. At one point, Krovax was about to win the fight, but then Gerard sliced him in half. As he was sliced in half after being that, Selina appeared and recovered Krovax's soul. This soul actually appeared to be normal as in it was his non-Phyrexian form. So I actually just want to do a little blurb about the planar chaos where basically there was an alternate reality now. In this reality, actually, it was Miri that killed Selina. So because of this, he became Krovax's ascendant hero. Pete Ventress, the, actually the artist of the picture, said he carries the sword of the Chosen and the cape is actually supposed to be related to Selina's wings. So Krovax is actually represented in four cards. The first card I was actually represented is Krovax the Cursed. 
So as you can see in the card, Corvax the Curse, it costs four for that zero zero. It says counts as a vampire. So as you can see, he's turned into a play with four plus one plus one counters. During your upkeep, sacrifice a creature or and put a plus one plus one counter. Again, kind of ties in with the story of him why he's cursed, turning into a vampire. So that's really cool. The next card is an Ascendant Invincer, and it's a legend creature he has, and it's six mana for that three three. And it's really cool saying, his snow snared by an angel's curse, Krovax twisted heroism into its purest shadow. Again, that has to do with him when he was being captured and turned into this evil guy. And the next card he's represented is actually Krovax, the Ascendant Hero. This is when the time spiral changed and he actually became a hero. And it was actually Miri that became infected, as you can know in the storyline. So this is where it happened. And as again, the wings might represent some kind of angel wings. So there's actually a lot of cards that he's depicted in, so let's begin with that list. And the first card that he's depicted in is actually, as you can see with the picture, it says, Kovacs' rage was horrified. Within moments, only blood and shreds of flesh remained of the shapeshifter. Again, that has to do with Selenia, so that's why. The next card is actually Curiosity, where it says, All Mary wanted to do was rest, but she couldn't ignore the nagging suspicion as she followed Kovacs' skulking form, because again, he was cursed at the point where they didn't realize, but Miri had that suspicion, which is really cool. So I like the picture too. Very done well. So the next card is Dark Triumph, where the saying is, all that's left is the coronation. Again, the picture, really cool. Represents the storyline where he is now the Invincer. So that, again, that's really good. So let's move on to Deadshot, which the Deadshot saying is, Carrion, keep your distance. My blade will come to you, Krovax. Very cool saying, very cool saying. The next card that he's depicted in is a death stroke. Where the saying is, for a split sharp second, Selena froze and Krovax's blade found home. As the angel shattered like glass, Krovax felt his mind collapse. The curse had been fulfilled. And we know that his curse turned into curse into himself. Corvax is also depicted in Diabolical Intent. As you can see, there he is sitting on his throne. There's no saying or anything, but based on the picture, it's pretty obvious that is him. And the next card that he's depicting it in is Dregs of Sorrow from Tempest. It says Corvax gazed upon the dead, and for one dark moment, he saw a banquet. Again, that's the ship, as you can see, when they started attacking. And the next card is Enfeeblement from the Tempest series. So the Enchanter creature gets minus two, minus two, because it ties in with the saying, Krovax had witnessed Selena lead the Predator to the Weatherlight. As the battle raged on the deck, he felt his strength melt in the heart of betrayal. So he was betrayed by the one angel that he set free, and again, tied into the storyline, which is really cool again. Next card he's depicted in is Fervent Charge. Wow, from Apocalypse. It says, Krovax was nearly buried beneath the weight of his opponents. There he is in the forest. As you can see, he was just trying to kill the people that were against his empire. The next card that he's depicted in is Flowstone Surge from Nemesis. And it says, the army was never a loss for weapons. Krovac was their forge. And there he is. Pretty cool. And he's also represented in Gerard's Vedic, where it says, I heart of flight and the soul of darkness cannot coexist. And again, that's kind of convenient with the battle between Gerard and him. Really cool card. Next card he's depicted in is Giant Strength from Tempest and his Chandra Creature is plus two, plus two. It says Krovax seemed filled only with fat shadows, but thought Orm. Where does he get his strength come from? Next card he is depicted in is Haunting Misery from Weatherlight, and it's just pretty simple. It says, I am condemned without end, Krovax. Next card he's in is Keen Sense, basically when it's like an alternate reality. It says Krovax sensed that Miri wasn't ready for the curse taking a hold of her. Weeping in his heart, he fled. Pretty cool card. Next card he is depicted in is Last Caress from Apocalypse, and it basically it says, Tower player loses one life and you gain one life, draw a card. But you can see that is his favorite angel in the world, so that's why it's right there. He's also depicted in Massacre from Nemesis, and there's no saying on it, but as you can see, that picture is obviously him. And Krovax is represented in Megrim from Strong, it says, you can away away from your plane, explain Gerard to Corvax, but take it from experience. You will tire before it does. Again, I, this card is really cool. I like how all these cards are just tied into the storyline. It's really cool. And the next card, as you can see, is Mine Extraction, and that is quite clearly, you can see Corvax on the card. 
next we see is Phyrexian Tyranny, and there's Crovax, and obviously people are looking at him. It says, he is Jagermoth's reward to me. I shall kill him a hundred times a day. Crovax, to Erte. Pretty cool picture of him, as you can see, with that blue, black, red card. The next card he's depicted in is Root Maze, which is a picture is really cool of him with the Root Maze. And the saying says, we should step, step up repairs. I think the forest has plans for us because <laughs> it's going toward the ship when it was damaged. Anyway, I think that's, again, I always say pretty cool. The next card is Slaughter. And as you can see, the picture is Crovax and Miri fighting. And then that's when the vampirism started taking over of his body. So that's when they were fighting. And the next card is Stronghold Discipline. And the saying goes, Crovax never passes up the opportunity to cause widespread misery. Belby. And as you know, Belby was the one to have to decide if he was to be the next leader. The next card he's depicted in is Vicious Hunger. It says, only the most ravenous souls feeds on the health of the weak. Again, this was actually one of my favorite cards in Nemesis when it first came out. Again, that logo is not from Nemesis, but it was originally from that series. But we're not talking about that. So anyway, there's Crovax, and he's looking at the mine. And the last card that Crovax is depicted in is Whispers of the Muse. And it says, I followed her song only to find it was a dirge. Crovax. So the next series of cards is if he was quoted or referred to in. So the skin, Angelic Protector, he is quoted in, My family sheltered in her light. The dark was content to wait. Crovax. Next card Crovax was quoted in was Barrow Ghoul from Weatherlight. It says, They killed my family to deny me a future. They fed all my ancestors to deny me a past. Next he's quoted in Buried Alive and it says, It is worse to walk while dead or to be buried alive. I have witnessed both. Crovax. And the next card he's quoted in says, Selina had hurt Miri terribly, but injuries of the flesh could be treated. The wounds she had torn in Crovax's soul would never be closed. Covalence. The next card he is quoted in is Dead Ringers from Apollo. It says, Beautiful isn't? Crowed Crovax. They fought together. Now they will die together. Next, Crovax is quoted in his Death Pit Offering. It says, kill them all and feed them to the new recruits. Crovax is an mincer. Next, Crovax is quoted in his Dizzying Gaze from Exodus. And it says, when I cut down my angel, I can only start my fall. Crovax. Next card he's quoted in is Endless Scream from Tempest. And it says, I have made Crovax weep. Now I will make him scream. The pain will not end, but will bind him to me. Fall wrath. Next card that he's associated with is the elves are right. Death inevitably leads to life, but truly powerful. Don't just experience the cycle. They control it. Crovax, the immenser from Essence Strain from 10th edition. Next card that he's in is Fatal Blow. It quite simply says, what is crueler? To let a wound of the heart fe fester or simply to cut it out? Crovax. And again, Fatal Blow because it shows a picture. Next is a Nemesis Flame Rift and it says, Crovax hungered for power and the stronghold devoured the sky it's really cool next card is gallo braid and it's from weatherlight and this legend creature it says its skin looks like stone it is only to match its heart crowbax next card that he's in is ghost town from teps and it says the air smells like a grave crowbax next card is grave pact and it says the bonds of loyalty can tie onto the grave crowbax the immenser Next card is actually one of my favorite in the entire magic world is Grindstone from Tempest and it says, Memory is a burden that wears at the soul as weather wears a stone. Crovax. And the next card he's quoted and referred to is an Infernal Tribute from Weatherlight. It says, I would not barter my soul for any of the filth that they called power. So they took it from me and damned me to solitude. Crovax. Next card is Morophin and it says, I looked into its eyes and its soul. It was so empty, I saw no reflection, no light was there. Crovax. Next card that he's represented is Overground Estate from Apocalypse, and it says, The decay of Crovax's ancestral home matched the statue of his soul. Next card is Rain of Tears from Tempest, and it says, These rains cannot quench. They carve the land's face like a scalpel on flash. Crovax. Next card is Razor Tooth Rats, and it says, Men and rats both hunger. We for our playthings, they for us. Crovax, the Invincer. Next card he's quoted in is Recurring Nightmare from Exodus. It says, I am confined by my sleep and defined by my nightmare. Crovax. Next card is he represented in is Respite. 
and says, if they board us, we're finished. Warned. Orum. Krovax nodded. And if they don't, dot dot dot. What then? Next card he's quoted or referred to in is Segmented Worm from Tempest. It says, if only we could see so easily leave behind those parts of ourselves that pain us. And the next card he's quoted in is Shattered Crypt from Weatherlight. It says, you must be mad to want one such as I aboard the Weatherlight. But I would be mad to remain here with my rotting family. I accept. Krovax. And the next card he's quoted in is Strands of the Night from Weatherlight. It says, I have seen the night torn into thin darkening strips and woven into shapes too bleak for dreams. Krovax. And the next card he's quoted in is Topo from Nemesis. It says, Let all witness the fate of those who defy me. Krovax. The next card Krovax is quoted in is Tortured Existence from Stronghold. And it says, there are terrors lurking in the unseen corners of us all. And the next card he's quoted or referred to in is Urbor Justice from Weatherlight. It says, It is a narrow line between justice and vengeance. Krovax. And the last card he is quoted in is Zombie Scavengers from Weatherlight. It says, Pick a shell upon my shore and put it in your ear. That is a sound isn't the sea, but the whispers of the fallen. Krovax. And there you have it guys, that's the entire history of Krovax. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you guys have a good day and a good evening. And if you like this video, there's more on the channel. Again, have a good day and a good evening.